I'm here. We got good to go. Nesh alongside for this one. Artosis will hopefully join us for the next game down the line. Upper left hand corner, we have Gypsy starting yeah. as the Green Terran, winner of the winner's final bracket, which means he goes up a game to start. Jane starting bottom right. Now keep in mind, at the winner's bracket final, they faced off, and Gypsy convincingly won that series. But Jane's now definitely warmed up after that last match. He's starting bottom right hand corner as the white Protoss. Yeah, if I'm JY, I'm coming in hot. I'm warmed up. I just won an impossible game. I'm feeling really good. Yeah, keep in mind, last game started off with a dead nexus at the natural expansion, and JY was able to turn it around and pull it out. Absolutely incredible play on his end, and a feat you're not going to see very often. Now, going into the finals versus Gypsy, Gypsy's crushed it all day, has stayed in the winner's bracket all the way through. And we decide what we're going to do. Is he taking up the 1-0 lead? Or is he I think he took the 1-0 lead, yeah. Go with the 1-0 lead. Got I think uh, Zen might have declared that it was a 1-0 lead, so we're going to call it right there. <laughs> Which I get, especially uh, with yeah, the timing so. overall. These guys have played against each other quite a bit. They're pretty good yeah. friends. And they are the top pro uh, top players for each respective race in, in, in North America right now. Yeah, arguably. I think uh, the only person I can think that could contest that may be Boa, maybe Dragon right this second. For but Protoss? For, for Protoss? Yeah. But uh, Jayun definitely, like, there's no way you can't say Jayun's in the top three, especially after today. Yes. He's very consistent, too. He won the last one. Um, yeah. If I'm, if I'm Jayun, I'm warmed up. I'm ready to go. I'm looking good. But Gypsy, he's watched all the games that Jayun played. He knows exactly how Jayun plays. And he's going to be thinking about, well, you know what? He plays very standard. I haven't seen anything tricky come out of Jayun. Uh, he. he what do you think, Diggity? What do you think of the options here for in Diggity's head? I mean, sorry, not Diggity's head, in uh, Gypsy's head. In Gypsy's head? Yeah. Uh, I would have to say, especially, I, my assumption would be, is if he was going to throw out something special, he would have done it in the first best of three series in the winner's bracket. Yeah. I don't think he was going to hold things out just so he could, you know, drop a group and then, you know, try to pull it out from behind with this and go down a game. So I'm not expecting anything different from Jayun. In these matches, I'm just he expecting heads up play. And one thing I still haven't seen from Gypsy, or honestly any of the Terrans today, I might have missed it in some of the off games, is that uh, that new aggressive build opener. And Jayun thus far has not been playing Zealot first, oftentimes. So I wouldn't be shocked to see that that fire, that hero builds out there. We got a lot of other builds that could be very, very punishing. Yeah. Without the uh, Zealot first opener, Jayun's been playing a little, uh, has been skipping that Zealot more often than not. I'm yeah. not sure if he can honestly afford to do that versus Gypsy through this series. Well, we'll see. I think it's a very standard opening for both of them. This is a four-player map, so maybe there are any special tactics um, special planned tactics. here. And <laughs> Well, you want me to call them stratagems? Stratagems, <laughs> I like it. No, every time I hear special tactics, you got to throw up the like, white raw. White raw. I mean, it's yeah. just it's so iconic. In the meantime, Jayun, yes, just sitting with one gate, looks like he wants to go one gate straight into expansion and is going to pull it off. A good map to do it on, the four-player map. To start, looks like Gypsy's already scouted top right. Actually, it looked like he went bottom left, then top right. And uh, he's definitely going to be able to scout that expansion, but holding up currently, waiting until... I'm wondering if he's going to wait or if he's just going to drop no, it. No, he just drops it, yeah. since he's so, got those three uh, uh, Marines in front to defend. Right. And the three Marines so it should be enough to defend off one goon. And uh, you don't need the bunker immediately. And now it depends if we're going to get a vulture follow-up or if we're going to straight, just go straight to add-on. And if we go straight to add-on, we're going to build a tank, uh, maybe get... Mines? I don't think we saw the vulture come down. Right? Yo, no, we, there is a vulture. Okay, so we, we are going to probably get up mines. We're probably going to mine up the third. Maybe also maybe put some mines in the front to make sure that uh, uh, JY doesn't uh, come out of his base. What this does do is this puts uh, JY in a more defensive position. He's got absolutely no tracking on that initial vulture. He's only got a single dragoon to defend currently. Probe at least was able to sneak all the way around and stay out of vulture fire range. It's not going to get past these marines and probably going to have to sacrifice its life to confirm. But look oh, at this. look at this. Starport at the 6 o'clock location in production. And if I am Gypsy, I'm probably going to just show my expo here. But I guess not. I think Gypsy's saying, no thank you. <laughs> no information. <laughs> no information. No information. Because I would actually let them kind of suspect that I'm doing something standard, right? Like you want, you want them to think, oh, I'm doing this normal thing. Let's see. I think this is actually a great first first build from Gypsy. He is, you know, 
he has he's up 1-0. He, he, he just only will benefit him being catched to Jayun by surprise. Probe not going to be able to make it back safely. Vulture picking it off. The Dragoon's going to try to march forward and get some disruption but pull back. Here's the thing. This Gypsy doesn't want to draw too much attention in this direction. Looks like the Dragoon currently checking. This is kind of an interesting play. So Jayun trying to stage this Dragoon forward to deny a Vulture Mine of his third. And he's going to yeah. feel like, okay, happy, sweet. I've got that third in a position. And that might trigger... But that I'm wondering if this is going to trigger something in his head. Okay. He is giving me an opportunity to maybe grab that extra third. This is how Jayun likes to play, but it, it is very likely going to close the noose with the trap because uh, we've already got a couple vultures out in position. He's dropping that third. That's going to make that defense off that drop all the more difficult. Well, he's also going to get a little bit... He's going to have more time to react when he sees the dropship go through the nexus. Uh, it all depends on the path that Gypsy's going to take the dropship. Most likely, he's going to go from 6 o'clock to 5 o'clock. A lot of territory to cover moving forward, covering that mine. I also wonder if Jayun smells something's up, considering how passive Gypsy's been playing through the stage. He's going to wander in. He sees no additional factories and just, yeah, no armory as well. This has to be sending alarm bells someplace. Yeah, there we go. I think 6.30 is a, it's a, it's a magic time that we'll get into Rorasa's uh, space. It's a magic time. <laughs> magic time is damage time or go-go time. So we got one Dragoon back towards the main. We got two near that gateway. This probe line still Ooh, somewhat I don't exposed. Think we, we caught it. No, we did catch it. There we go. I think. Uh... So Jayun actually able to shut this down pretty rapidly. Is there? And the mines have already been expended. That's so actually... the vulture is actually diving in and just getting wiped out immediately. That was just a donation of, of several minerals. It looks like some scattering oh, look, into the natural some. expansion. Yeah. Got a a few. Looks like three kills and on that disruption. vulture. But not a massive win, and I don't think it was worth that starport investment. But maybe we're going fast upgrades. I think there might be an uh, armory out somewhere. Yeah, we're going to go fast upgrades. It's going to be two, uh, the 2 1 is going to hit even faster. We might have uh, 2 1 by the 11 minute mark. With that, units going to hit pretty hard. One thing I do think is an advantage for Terran on this map is you do have that nearby third, which is pretty easy to go ahead and grab. It's not like you're and pretty easy to reinforce. Yeah. Uh, same thing. Obviously, on the Protoss side of the map, but I feel like it's more critical for Terran to be able because you've got that option. You can just do the. You got the. It starts opening up the threats. You got the level one weapons you can do. You can either fold back to two one, and then obviously, if you're, none of that works, you just feel like going for the three base, max out to two hundred. That's always an option for you. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, right now we're playing very safe. I'm actually surprised that uh, JY didn't opt for some reaver build here. That he's been doing against Artosis. Um, Maybe he's tried that in the previous games and probably was the unsuccessful. I think Gypsy did open um, a turret ring against Reavers, so it might not have been the most productive way to play against Gypsy. Actually seeing a quick Citadel of a Dune. We'll see if this is to go for a quick three base Arbiter. I, I'm wondering if there would even well, be... Well, we will know the indication if you look at the gas. If you look at the second gas, if there's a second gas that's up, but, you know, he has three gases. Yeah. So we're definitely either going to go Templars or we're going to go uh, uh, Arbiter, for sure. I'm a, I want to keep an eye out because I would... It's not out of Jayun's capabilities to go for a very delayed DT drop, and that might catch Gypsy off guard. It's not something you see typically. I'm expecting Arbiter, honestly, here. Yeah, there's the Stargate, so I'm definitely Stargate. more... Stargate, we don't archives. see the Templar Archives quite yet. Yeah, there it is there in that it back is. corner. But yeah, going to go three base Arbiter to open this up. However, Gypsy very comfortably staging up at this third. He's actually already got a... He's still got a supply lead. Uh, yeah. Still has that drop ship open to him. Plus one weapons is going to finish in Do not too long. Do we have a science facility? I think that is a the, uh, good question. Not no. seeing it anywhere yet. Well, it's getting pretty close. I feel like now will be the time. To, I guess he might have skipped it. So we're not... The science facility is not up. We're not going to get that 2-1 by the 11 minute mark. But, I mean, it's still great to have upgrades against Pro, uh, Prodox. Right? There's a fast 1-0. So we will be able to use defender's advantage... With, with upgrades, and it'll, it'll be more effective. So now we got that science facility dropping in that corner. We got two more factories tacking on to bring the count up to five, really fill things in. And both players playing very passively and just sitting back and macroing. Right now, I'm going to put Gypsy ahead because, uh, as far usually as Protoss, you want to be 15 supply up about this stage. June is going to be able to get that Arbiter up, but uh, it looks like yeah, that's going to get well. scanned right off the bat some cannons defensively just in case there was going to be a follow-up drop but uh he also looks look that i think that starport might have been lifted off and retreated 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. We we took that back all the way. All the way. <laughs> Look at that. We, that starboard is coming home. He's seen the world. Yeah. Looks like the... That's Saving Private Ryan right there. Yeah, there you go. Made it all the way back. <laughs> SCV Escort and everything. Good amount of seat shanks on the front. It, yeah, James played this very, very passively as a play. And actually, I think it, the more passive you are as a Terran player, um, the better it is for Protoss. Yeah. I think that's actually one of the uh, critical mistakes of last game. It was just a little bit too passive, allowing Protoss to recover and, 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 and definitely uh, giving the opportunity, and did give the opportunity to make a comeback. You guys heard it from Nesh here. Be aggressive as Terran. Looks like Jayun did take a fourth at a three o'clock. Another drop coming. Gypsy right on time. And the cannon not yet up. That's going to evacuate. And we got a siege tank alongside. Dragoon scrambling to go ahead and deal with this. This should be sufficient to take uh, take it out. But there's still going to be some losses, and that's still going to slow down Jayun's economy. And and we are going to get the dropship, and we're going to get the siege tank. I think there was somewhat of disruption there, but mostly, mostly, uh, I think it's about real, real no damage taken by Jayun at this point. Not a lot of damage, but he's. But if you look at the supply counts, Gypsy actually ahead. He's got the upgrades, he's got plus two and plus one armor on the way, and he's got a really solid economy and factories behind this. Yeah. yeah if you want to give it a standard macro game, uh, it's just going to depend on, you know, unit control. Oh, Look wait. Look at this. Wow, okay, this is actually surprising. Uh, do we see upgrades, though, or is there air upgrades going on? I think Gypsy is probably going to be unaware of this unless he scans again. So uh, Let's keep an eye out for a Goliath or two, but yeah, that was, I think this is a, a nice mind game here from Jayun. He knows that the Arbiter Tribunal was scanned, so everything was indicating, okay, this is going to be standard Arbiter play, and then really quickly after that fourth, shutting down that drop, all of a sudden you have carriers coming, and I don't know that Gypsy's going to be any, any of the wiser. Is maybe just yeah. anticipating, okay, this is just going to be standard or whatever. We're just going to hit that max 200 army and clash and start going for exchanges everywhere. He's already setting up to grab his fourth. And yeah, I don't see any indications. So a comsat flurry, but I don't see any indications of uh, anti-air. Well, here's what one way to give, give it away. Um, he's probably looking for zealots. And if we don't see zealots, if we don't see a big army, right, as a gypsy, we're, we're trying to see where the army's positioned, kind of be aware of, you know, have the army sense of, like, where they are. Now, all I've seen is goons, and maybe I'm a little bit skeptical. Uh, there might be something fishy going on, or something something of that nature, right? Um, so Gypsy might be the wiser. He is a very good player, after all. Yeah, did see that Arbiter. So Arbiter is at least confirmed that it's an Arbiter out in the field, and yeah, now we're starting to see that Starport shimmer. We see a few Goliaths out in the field. I'm not. See I'm still seeing some Vultures being added to this army, though. And I would expect in a carrier response to be a just a flood of Goliaths. We'll have to see if that count increases. Yeah, I think that four Goliaths is in it just for some shuttle play. Uh, yeah, I'm not really certain. Uh, I actually thought the same thing you were thinking that, hey, he's definitely going to go, oh yeah, no, I think Gypsy does have just no idea this is going to be a carrier build. So we've already got two out. The count's growing. Plus one weapons is already finished. I think it's three. Or three? Am I missing it? Yeah, you're right. Three. Yeah, I missed three. it. Bad bad hover. Three plus an observer hanging out alongside. Arbiter is moving up, just keeping uh, Gypsy distracted and actually clearing a lot. It looks like Jayun. So, yeah, Jayun's showing indications that he's going for more of a guerrilla style and it's trying to expand across the map and set up some sort of refugee or whatever not. But we know all the wiser that we got some carriers and four are already out on the map. And yeah, I don't think Gypsy is aware of this. He, I'm not seeing a, a large Goliath presence, and he's hitting near max as well. Oh well, yeah, this, he might be just in trouble because um, he's probably expecting, you know, an attack at this point. So yeah, he's looking for size storm to be moving in, a storm of zealots, something along those lines. Mostly, James done a fantastic job of keeping him in the dark and just keep and dodging that army in and out and making it look like, especially with grabbing some of these additional bases making it look like, yep, I'm just staging up and maybe a little bit delayed and getting some of my uh, uh, additional gateways down at some location, something yeah, along I mean, those lines. Yeah, he really lines. thinks it's a recall. Like, he, he really feels like, hey, you're going to recall me? Um, now, these carriers are definitely going to be a surprise. You're just going to, he's not going to see them. I'm going to wonder how he's going to react. Some kind of reactions you can do here is start killing off your own units so you can make, make vultures, like make alliance. Because, uh, like, he does have too much vultures on, on the ground. Yeah. You, can throw the, you can throw the vultures away at the army, um, uh, and 
the third option is to kind of just mass turret around uh, all of your bases. So I wonder if he's recognized the situation now as he started moving vultures across the field maybe to sack them. Jane being very patient with this still hasn't revealed the carriers or the carrier position. I'm actually, are they still, yeah, they're still, they're trying to dodge oh, out and we're still to getting, hide the we're numbers. We're getting critical mass at this point. It's and actually, uh, we're looking in real bad yeah, shape. Yeah, we already got eight and plus three weapons already. Plus three weapons. Oh, man, this is, uh, this might be a quick, quick turnaround. So Gypsy now grabbing that 12 o'clock location and still seeing no sniff of a genuine army. He's moving the majority of his army. He's playing the standard of like, yeah, I got to wipe a base out at the top right. I don't think he, yeah, I don't know that he's recognized the situation. So once those carries are revealed, we'll see if we got some sort of turnaround. I've seen that, that we do have science vessels and EMP, so that'll definitely help here. But yeah, he's got very, very minimal anti-air altogether. Yeah. So once these carriers engage, I, I guarantee it's going to be a huge shock for Gypsy. Yeah, and I'll see if that science here vessel gets we go. picked off. Yeah, this is it. This is the moment that we've been waiting for. Let's see what the response is. Gypsy realizes, oh man, we're in deep trouble right now. All these carriers—they basically came out of nowhere. Um, he's, I mean, the ground army is not engaging any tanks. We're just going to kill off. We're just going to pick off as many tanks as possible now. And and really, all Gypsy can do is run back to his main. This and is. Oof. He's carving this army up pretty rapidly. Yeah. Pushing all the way through. It looks like some more vultures going to try to dive down bottom left. We've got a slew of cannons in the way. Another Nexus. Uh, the Nexus is still up top right. So, Jaehyun, assuming yeah. he didn't... This, is this, this again, I feel like this was a great strategy from Jaehyun. Absolutely He's brilliant. completely blindsided um, uh, Gypsy. And we're going to take out the... Oh, yeah, I mean, when you see Joe's tanks, they're just easy picking. Right, right now, yeah, the supply... Yeah, we're plumbing. just going to take out all the tanks. I mean, we don't really care about Goliaths right now. Uh, we have a ground army. We haven't used our ground army. Actually, we're using the ground army to kill the command center that's been lifted. Actually, you could probably just... I, it, I like that he waited there, where he, he's like, you know what, I can pick off this command center pretty rapidly with these eight carriers. And so just delayed, got some additional siege tanks bonus. Group repair, trying to make it happen. Still clinging on, actually, with that group repair, yeah. but the rest of that army starting to move forward. And the siege tank's very, very spread out at this stage. Wow, look, all of those SCVs, finally, finally the command center down. drops. But that took absolutely forever to wipe out. Regardless, Gypsy now at three bases. He's managed to get a good Goliath force out. He has plus two weapons, though, which is going to put him behind the plus three weapons of the carrier. And the carrier's already got plus one armor. Yeah, I think where's our engagement? Um, we, we do have a lot of tanks. I mean, the Gaon army is going to melt for, for, for Jeyu, but the Goliath count is increasing. It's, just all, it's going to depend on how well... Gypsy can micro here. Now, as we seen last game, uh, Jayun Jayun does a pretty good job uh, with his carrier micro. Absolutely. Right now, he's got a 30 supply lead, still mining off a couple bases. The bottom right is no longer mining. One problem with the carrier micro that people—it's so intensive to micro carriers. I've heard Protoss players talk about this, where it's very intensive to micro carriers, and sometimes what can end up happening is yeah. you stop macroing. You start you. Uh, end up with situations like this where you have probes that are idle. It looks like Jane is getting back on top of that, uh, recognizing that situation. Right now, Gypsy trying to hunt those carriers down and do what he can. I have to feel like he feels like he's in a similar situation to Artosis in the previous match. Yeah. Um, yeah, I just don't know that he has the critical mass here that he needs to be engaging. It's what, probably 24 Goliaths at this point? So, probably need 36, 48. I mean, 12 siege tanks. I just don't think this is a good idea chasing the ground army. However, it might be that Jayun has too many probes. I don't see, I don't know where all the supply is. Yeah, it looks like most of his supply might be in probes across these bases. Because this is a. Never mind. That's uh, where the supply <laughs> is. Found the supply, if you guys were wondering. Six. Full control group of carriers barreling up, and yeah, despite the numerous Goliaths on the map. This is... A, well, this I think Jayun has to now decide to go to uh, Storm Tech, right? He yeah. has to get Storms. He has to do the play that he did last game. He has to get some DTs. He has to get this uh, Goliath countdown. Yeah, get some sort of support on the ground to thin the Goliaths out. Uh, I think, yeah, this, this, this might be a bad engagement. This is too much open space. There's just too many Goliaths, too much firing. I think we gotta start, start 
utilizing the uh, ledges like he did last game. So two carriers already down, three carriers down, and the Goliath still on the hunt. First open space for Gypsy. 12 o'clock base is just getting established. I'm waiting for Jayun to swing that direction because even with the Goliath's presence there, could swing that direction, yeah. take it out pretty rapidly. And if it comes into this, basically it comes down to a, a how, can you yeah. force and, Gypsy well, to starve Gypsy's out on the base? Really it out. looks like he's focusing on the, on the interceptors. Um, he's not allowing. Oh, this might this might not be great. No, nope. he realizes he might have caught himself a little bit trapped. And there you go. Uh, Gypsy is six carriers, five carriers, four maybe. Four, four. Come on, you can do it. And there we go. Four carriers. Suddenly, this game is suddenly shifted. Right? This is actually pretty amazing. Uh, amazing from Gypsy. He's just, his his control is just so good. Yeah, usually you see a situation where you get 12 carriers in the air and it's uh, that's GG, it's uh, it's done with, but he's staying at it. He's sneaking an expansion bottom left, he's mined out at his main, he's mined out at his natural expansion, the 9 o'clock is still running, he still is running at his third, he's grabbed the 12 o'clock but hasn't been able to get SCVs out that direction, Jayun's still at max supply, but Jayun's running on a lot of bases, however, the, the we mentioned earlier, he's got a lot of bases, he's got a lot of probes, but it's been basically carriers and no support otherwise underneath this. Just kind of a few Dragoons, a few Dark Templar. We haven't seen High Templar take the field as of yet. And that could be a, a big turnaround. But Gypsy all of a sudden has managed to pick off a good amount of carriers. He's dropped the count from a full control group now to half a control group. Yeah, this is uh, this is great. But this is the kind of micro that um, Jayu needed to do earlier. Just focus on these on these ledges. And when the Goliath, Goliath count gets too great, just run back, run away. Uh, I definitely think he, I definitely think he needs uh, Templars, and he really needs to hold this army back. It's starting to green on two critical bases here, bottom left for Jayun, Gypsy, and I don't even think he realizes that Gypsy set up shop at that nearby uh, third base. Dark Templars really doing some work sneaking in here, forcing a lot of that commsats and. It's really that's beneficial a, that's to do that. That's a trade that you can take. One, one siege tank for one temp, uh, dark empire. That's a, actually pretty great. It's a trade you can take, look, forcing a lift off of the 12 o'clock. And the other advantage of it is it forces down a lot of comsat, which means you have less comsat to start spotting and sniping those carriers. Yeah, now I, uh, I'm not sure about this engagement from Gypsy, but I guess he has to do something to save his expansion. Um, Gypsy uh, flipping it and starting to play more Protoss style, recognizing that carriers are slow units and it takes him a really long time to get out there. So he has a command center top left, he's got a sneaky one here bottom left, he's lifted off the 12 o'clock, he's going to try to redrop that and just yeah. basically make sure that he stays alive and yeah, play... I think Gypsy's doing it, man. Play the War of Attrition. He's, he's, he's doing it. I think he's hitting the critical mass that he needs. He has the carrier count low. Uh, he's sinking up with his Arbiter. What was that? Eight? Uh, ten carriers. He has an Arbiter. Uh, he's going to knock out this expansion. He's just going to focus on Interceptors. Yeah, yeah he's going to focus position. on Interceptors. Um, get the Interceptor count low, take out this expansion, move on to the next base. Uh, don't really try to engage Protoss. Right. I, I think the missing key for Jayun right now is is the storm. I think he needs storm to to be in, you know in these battles. Otherwise, it's additional combat's finally coming out, picking up that dark templar, the dark templar. But yeah, the third base looks like it's going to get taken out. And this is and natural expansion's gone. You've got the third, which is nearly gone. So Jayun's going to then be down to three mining bases bottom left. Oh, but I think you know what. James doing a pretty good job here. I think the number of lives has suddenly dwindled. I think, you know, it's. I don't think this base is going to go down, but there are, again, no workers on this base, uh, which might be what Jayun might need. I feel like a yeah, lot of supplies. Supply. Is, yeah, a lot of supplies and probes. So now, yeah, he's got the saturation here that he already needed with the probes down there. He's now got some supply open and a huge bank as well, 4,000 minerals. So he can spend that in a hurry. He's still been pegged at that 200, 200 for a, an extended period of time. It looks like Gypsy cleared out some cannons, but is going to get wiped out. That army is going to get wiped out otherwise. What Gypsy's done a great job of doing, though, is being aggressive absolutely everywhere, which is really protected and allow him to get that 12 o'clock up, this bottom left up, and uh, doesn't ha hasn't had to worry anything about the 9 o'clock this entire time, despite there being a huge carrier fleet out on the map. 
Yeah. Uh, but they're still all maxed out. It's a max, max uh, army. They're going to engage again. Now, we're fighting uh, ground army plus carriers. This is not ideal uh, for the Terran, but I think there's just not any, enough critical mass of ground army yet. Yeah, Jane, yeah, I think you're right. I think High Templar would be a nice villain. It looks like that 3 o'clock has been wiped out. Some distance mining probes are still getting taken out. 15 kills, 17 kills on that siege tank before it's finally wiped out. I think I just noticed the uh, upgrades are only 3 1. Is that the case? Yep, 3 1. I've seen that maybe a couple times. The, maybe that's one of the reasons why the Goliaths aren't being as effective against these uh, interceptors. Or also, these carriers. also, as the upgrades continue, once we start hitting that three level 3 uh, Protoss armor, it's going to make it a little bit more challenging out in the field for these guys as well. We do have some, it looks like some Zealots going for a run by. I'm assuming they're going to go ahead and attack that 12 o'clock location, but this bottom left hand base, it's going to be a close one here because Jayun doesn't look like he's going to be able to protect the bottom left. He's sending out more Dark Templar as an emergency to try to protect this. Yeah. That's, I don't think that's going to hold. The Zealots trying to attack that 12 o'clock, but Gypsy's happy to just go ahead and transfer them top right and saturate that base. He's trying to distance mine at the 3 o'clock. All of a sudden, he, he has a large bank to work with, but he doesn't have any new income coming in, where Gypsy distance mining, well not distance mining, mining it just all over the place on the map, is managing to hold and stay relevant, and it looks like he's doing a good job spending, and all of a sudden now has a supply lead. Yeah, I think Gypsy's, Gypsy's making this work. I think he's realizing, hey, you don't, don't have a lot of bases, you don't have a lot of ground army. If I can keep your intercept count low, keep catching in the middle of the map, you're going to uh, you're going to have you know, unfavorable trades. Looks like the Groons have finally found top right. I'm not sure if Gypsy's going to be able to dedicate forces to get up there. The Goliath's having trouble along this edge. It looks like that attack force is thinning, but they've already taken out bottom left. And at 6 o'clock, I'm not sure if that's much of a prize or not. We still have a full, we have another full control group of carriers out on the map. SCV's now evacuating top right from those Dragoons. 12 o'clock still sailing, though. This base still sealing, so you got three bases up and running, and right now Jayun is distance mining at the 3 o'clock. The 6 o'clock base is looking thin and is going to be gone, and bottom left is his only mining base. That's going to be three base Terran versus effectively one base Protoss, so he really yeah. needs to win with these carriers. Yeah, I mean, well, he's doing it, right? I think that's the important part. I mean, Gypsy's army is down to 159. We were at 200-200. Uh, he's slowly um, getting the better upgrades. He's Yeah, I think this is a, as the game progresses and continues. He's looking, uh, I mean, it really depends on how he's going to get this next base. I think there is going to be a point after like doing all this damage that Jayun's going to need another base. Exactly. And I'm wondering if he's thinking of moving into this one once he evicts right there. It looks like some probes making their way cross map already. Yeah. And yeah, it looks like the Goliath count really plummeting. Jayun all of a sudden with a 20 supply lead, some siege tanks moving up. They are going to catch some probes mid map. I don't. Well, it looks like Jayun's going to let... Uh, no, maybe not going to let them go. Trying to regather. Not a lot of Goliaths here. And it does feel like the momentum has suddenly shifted despite being down a lot of bases. Jayun's been able to gather up the Dragoons, engaging against the siege tanks, and there, yeah, just yeah. too many carriers. Just Gypsy many carriers. GGs. Gypsy calls it. So the gambit pays off. Jayun, with a brilliant play at the start, showing Arbiter Tech, and then switching straight out to carriers. To carriers. And Gypsy falling for the ruse and getting caught off guard.